Our goal in Chapter 15 is to reinforce the importance of relationships in today's high-tech, over-communicated world and to demonstrate how a variety of marketing tools can be integrated with advertising to enhance an organization's relationship with its stakeholders. Direct marketing, personal selling, packaging, and sales promotion play different but often overlapping roles in IMC programs. Each offers many opportunities but also has limitations. Let's take a look. The key to building brand equity in the 21st century is the development of interdependent, mutually satisfying relationships with customers and other stakeholders. Further, to manage these relationships, companies need to consciously and conscientiously integrate their marketing communications activities with all their other company functions so that all the messages the marketplace receives about the company are consistent. Seamless, consistent communication from every corner of the company is how a firm earns a good reputation. And that is the principal objective of IMC, Integrated Marketing Communications, the process of building and reinforcing relationships by developing and coordinating a strategic communications program through a variety of media or other contacts. <clears throat> direct marketing is defined by the Direct Marketing Association as an interactive process of addressable communication that uses one or more advertising media to affect at any location a measurable sale, lead, retail purchase, or charitable donation, with this activity analyzed on a database for the development of ongoing mutually beneficial relationships between marketers and customers, prospects, or donors. Wow, that's a mouthful. But I would add that along with mass advertising, direct marketing allows organizations to inform potential customers, create brand awareness, or spur immediate purchase behavior. In addition, direct marketing enjoys certain advantages over mass advertising, such as measurability, accountability, efficiency, and higher return on investment. There are several key characteristics of direct marketing within this definition. First and foremost, direct marketing is interactive, meaning buyers and sellers can exchange information with each other directly. Of course, this interaction can take place at any location. Customers may respond by telephone, via mail-in coupons, over the internet, at a retail store, or even at a kiosk. This Direct Marketing Association definition also refers to addressable communication, suggesting that marketers can identify those prospects, customers, or donors most likely to be interested in their product or service. Addressability is the goal of database marketing. Database marketers build and maintain a pool of data on current and prospective customers and other stakeholders and communicate with them using a variety of media, from personal contact to direct mail to mass media. Database marketing is a widely adopted marketing method because it is proven to be a cost-efficient way to increase sales. A good database enables marketers to target, segment, and grade customers. It helps them to know who their customers and prospects are, what and when they buy, and how to contact them. That, of course, leads to the possibility of the ongoing, mutually beneficial relationships described previously. So today, database marketing is a major component of many IMC programs. Note that the definition of direct marketing refers to the use of one or more advertising media. Part of the confusion with the direct marketing name is its similarity to direct mail. But direct mail is just one of the many media that direct marketers use. <clears throat> Experienced direct marketers have known for years that using more than one medium can be far more productive than using a single medium. Direct marketing works effectively with mass advertising to inform, create awareness, and spur immediate purchase behavior. The final point is that direct marketing can be distinguished from mass advertising in the areas of measurability, accountability, efficiency, and return on investment. The kind of advertising direct marketers use is called direct response advertising. This is because direct marketing efforts are always aimed at stimulating some action or response on the part of the customer or prospect. It may be in the form of a request for information, a store visit, or an actual purchase. Because these responses can be measured, direct marketing is accountable. And that, more than any other reason, accounts for the tremendous growth of direct marketing in recent years. Managers like it because they can measure its efficiency and return on investment, what they got for their money. 
Direct marketing is the oldest marketing method, but has grown recently as demands on customers' time increase and technological changes make remote shopping easier. Modern computer technology enables marketers to compile and analyze important customer information in unprecedented ways. Penny Bowes, for instance, was the dominant company in the postal meter business. However, its growth rate and profitability were flattening. So the company used its database to identify its best customers, their value to the organization, and their needs and buying behavior. From this, Pitney Bowes created a customer lifetime value model based on the customer's historical and potential worth. Computing and ranking the lifetime value of all of its 1.2 million customers showed that more than two-thirds of the customer base value resided in fewer than 10% of the customers. This analysis led Pitney Bowes to develop a distinct marketing strategy for both its best and its worst customers. It began a sophisticated loyalty program for its best customers and a retention program for its problem account. By the end of the first year, the program had reduced attrition by 20% and the reduction in cost of sales alone paid back the entire direct marketing investment. Loyalty or continuity programs are designed to reward customers for their continued business. Most loyalty programs compensate customers for frequent and continuous patronage. Consumer purchases are tabulated in a company's database and discounts, free products, or services are awarded when specific levels are reached. The database can also provide the company with a demographic profile and purchase history for each customer. Direct marketing is the best way to develop a good database. The database enables the marketer to build a relationship by learning about customers in depth, their nuances, what and where they buy, what they're interested in, and what they need. With a database, companies can choose the prospects they can serve most effectively and profitably, the purpose for all marketing. People like to see themselves as unique, not part of some 100 million member mass market. Through direct marketing, especially addressable electronic media, Companies can send discrete messages to individual customers and prospects. With different types of sales promotion, a company can encourage individuals, not masses, to respond and can develop a relationship with each person. By responding, the prospect self-selects, in effect giving the marketer permission to begin a relationship. The direct marketing database then becomes the company's primary tool to initiate, build, cultivate, and measure the effectiveness of its loyalty efforts. By providing a tangible response, direct marketing offers accountability. Marketers can count the responses and determine the cost per response. They can also judge the effectiveness of the medium they're using and test different creative executions. Direct marketing offers convenience to time-sensitive consumers and it offers precision and flexibility to cost-sensitive marketers. For example, to reach small B2B markets, there is no more cost-effective method than the database-driven direct response media. Also, the economics of direct marketing are becoming more favorable. It used to be easy for big companies to spend a few million dollars for primetime network TV spots when everybody was home watching and the average cost was only a penny to 10 cents per person. But those days are over. Everybody's not home today. And if they are, they're watching 160 different channels or a DVD. They have a remote control to mute ads or a DVR to skip them. Further, network TV advertising is far more expensive than it used to be. Thus, targeted direct response media, such as magazines, cable TV, direct mail, email, or kiosks, are more cost competitive than ever before. Finally, unlike the public mass media, direct response media can be more private. A company conduct, can conduct a sales letter campaign without the competition ever knowing about it. At the same time, direct marketing still faces some challenges. In the past, direct marketers were sales-oriented, not relationship-oriented. This gave direct marketing a bad reputation in the minds of many consumers. Some people also enjoy the experience of visiting retail stores and shopping. They like to see and feel the goods personally, and they're hesitant to buy goods sight unseen. This is why the objective of many direct marketing campaigns is now to help drive traffic to retail locations. Direct marketing efforts often have to stand on their own without the content support of the media that advertising enjoys. 
They don't always get the prestigious affiliation offered by some media. This makes it more difficult and costly to build an image for the product, something mass media advertising is particularly good at. Direct marketing also suffers from clutter. People are deluged with mail from commercial sponsors and drum-beating politicians. Cable channels are filled with infomercials for food processors. Telemarketing pitches intrude on consumers at work and at home. Internet ads and emails permeate our daily lives. Many consumers are also concerned with privacy. They don't like having their names sold by list vendors. At one national forum of direct marketers, attendees were told they must self-regulate, give consumers more control, and treat privacy like a customer service issue, or risk legislation restricting access to the information they desperately need. Wise marketers have heeded these warnings and developed methods for responsible direct marketing. All direct marketers face two basic strategy decisions, the extent to which they will use direct sales and the extent to which they will use direct response advertising. They can use either or both. In a direct sales strategy, marketers' representatives sell to customers directly, either at home or at work, rather than through a retail establishment or some other intermediary. Direct sales feature personal, i.e. face-to-face, direct selling, or telemarketing. Thus, direct selling is defined as face-to-face selling away from a fixed retail location. In this sense, direct selling usually refers to a method of marketing consumer goods, everything from encyclopedias and insurance to cosmetics and nutritional products. Telemarketing includes selling and prospecting by telephone, answering phone inquiries, and providing sales-related services to callers. The information collected is also used to update the company's customer database. Telemarketing is the major source of income for some companies and organizations, such as nonprofit and charitable causes, political candidates, and home study courses. Advertising that asks the reader, viewer, or listener to provide a response, ideally in the form of a purchase, straight to the sender is called direct response advertising. Any medium can be used for direct response, but the most common are direct mail, catalogs, magazines, television, and digital interactive media, such as emails and search engines. In all cases, a prospective customer is urged to respond immediately and directly to the advertiser through the use of a direct response mechanism provided in the advertisement. The mechanism might be a coupon, a reply card, a toll-free telephone number, an email address, or an internet link. Personal selling can be defined in a number of ways, depending on the orientation of the company using it. For our purposes, we define personal selling as the interpersonal communication process by which a seller ascertains and then satisfies the needs of a buyer to the mutual long-term benefit of both parties. People in sales work for a wide variety of organizations and call on an equally wide variety of customers. They may call on other businesses to sell products or services used in the manufacture of other products. They may call on resellers, people who buy the product and add value and resell it. Or they may sell to consumers, either in a retail store or, as we discussed earlier, in a direct selling situation away from a fixed retail location. The greatest strength of personal selling is its personal nature. Nothing is as persuasive as personal communication. A skilled salesperson can observe a prospect's body language and read between the lines to detect what's troubling the customer. The rep can ask questions and answer queries as they arise. The face-to-face situation facilitates instant feedback, and the rep has the flexibility to adjust the presentation, tailoring it specifically to the needs and interests of the particular prospect. Time is on the rep side, too. The sale doesn't have to be made today. One of the major jobs of personal selling is to gain distribution for new products, a task no other communication tool can do as well. However, it has some downsides. Personal selling is very labor intensive. That's why it's the most costly way to communicate with prospects. This is its single biggest weakness. Not only that, but it's very time consuming. Because it's basically a one-on-one medium, there are few economies of scale. Another drawback is the poor reputation of personal selling with many people. Decades of suede shoe salesmen employing high-pressure tactics had dishonored the profession. 